Michigan is home to more than 11,000 inland lakes, 36,000 miles of rivers and streams, 5.5 million acres of wetlands, and 3,200 miles of shoreline. We're also home to 123,000 miles of fuel pipelines. Between 2004 and 2013, there were 116 reported incidents on pipelines in Michigan, and that does include the July 26, 2010 pipeline rupture that estimates at 843,000 gallons of crude oil into the Kalamazoo River. That was a wake-up call for many of us, and a reminder that pipelines can cause, that have risks to pipelines. So significantly, um, pipelines have been sort of out of sight, out of mind for many, many years, and for us at the Watershed Council as well. Pipelines have become a priority for elected officials and for environmental organizations and industry and tourism uh, businesses as well. So the Watershed Council became involved when we and others recognized that a pipeline failure in our region would be significant to the health and safety of our residents, the visitors, our vibrant tourism economy, as well as the water resources, our significant water resources. And this is what we've been doing. We have spent considerable time researching pipeline safety and regulations. We've conducted public education and outreach. We've recommended measures to prevent pipeline incidents. And we've been participating in emergency preparedness activities. So in order to bring greater attention to pipelines and the way our communities can work, mm -hmm. we developed a Northern Michigan Pipeline Education Project. This project is funded by FIMSA, or Pipeline Hazardous Material Safety Administration, and it includes educational events such as this workshop, the publication which we put into your packet today, and we will have a detailed website in the next couple of weeks that will be online. So in addition to providing public with accurate information about, about pipelines in our area, we also wanted to foster open communication by providing the opportunity for dialogue and direct communication between those of you in the community with pipeline operators, federal and state agencies. So that's why we're here today. To build upon an educational symposium we hosted last year so that we can further delve into these issues in more detail in a little bit smaller setting, although with 100 people it's not exactly tiny. We were expecting fewer folks, um, and, but we're thrilled. We're thrilled that all of you are here. We're hoping that this improves your understanding of pipelines in Northern Michigan, how federal, state, and local agencies, as well as Enbridge, are working to ensure pipeline safety, and how you can get involved to protect our communities. I, uh, uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank all the speakers and participants. P people have really traveled a long way to participate and to help us understand more about Line 5 in particular, but pipelines in general and the programs. We also have, uh, have great assistance um, from media outlets, including Shawaygan Tribune, Petoskey News Review, and the Straits Lynn Resort. So lastly, um, we know this is a hot topic and people have really strong opinions, and so we're going to ask that everyone remain respectful to everybody's perspectives and to all the other attendees. So now some announcements. If when you signed in we didn't tell you, there's coffee and tea up here, and fountain drinks, and there's filtered water in the fountain drinks. You're welcome to take advantage of all that at any point in time, and a few little nibbles in the back room. The restrooms are downstairs. Um, I think that's all those kind of logistics. There's an evaluation form in your folder. We're especially interested in having you fill that out. And um, we have two comments that are um, relevant to the presentations themselves. Number one, Bernetta Tomasi is our timekeeper. So all you presenters, she has two pieces of paper. One she's going to hold up that says you have two minutes, and the other one says stop. <laughs> so at that point in time, I don't know if you know Bernetta or not, but you need to stop. <laughs> there she is in the back. She'll be sitting up front with her pieces of paper. And in order to have enough time for dialogue, which is what we really want, we are going to hold presenters to that time frame. In addition to that, we want to hold questions. There's two presenters in most of these sessions. So we want both presenters to have their time, and then we'll have questions after that. But there should be plenty of time for that kind of dialogue, which is really, really what we want. So I believe I'm done with announcements. Burnett, uh, Jennifer is going to be in charge of the rest, which means Everybody's presentations are on here. She'll be queuing those up. She'll be announcing each speaker, and then Granetta will be um, doing the timekeeping, and then 
if there's moderation needed for the questions and answers, that will be Jennifer as well. You're also on film, just so you know. This presentation will be on our website, as was the last pipeline symposium. So if you need to leave early or whatever, you can always check that out. If there are people that you know that couldn't attend that want to see this presentation, um, all six hours of it will be on our website. All right, thanks for coming.